During this tutorial, we will be highlighting a portfolio optimization model as a vehicle for highlighting several features of model risk. In particular, the optimization functionality built into model risk professional. What we've done here is we've started with some stock price prices for all of 2009. And so there's a closing value for each of these stocks. Then we take the delta or the change, the day-to-day -day change, and convert that into log returns. The reason we do that is it's easier, it's, it makes it easier later to just add up the returns from every future period and convert them back out of log space to get the total return. So we take the prices ending at each day of 2009. We convert those into the, into the log returns. Because we know there's correlation in the stock markets, we're going to use a copula fitted to the log return data. In this case, we've fitted a multivariate T copula. This is a feature unique to model risk, and certainly in the Excel environment. We could, in this case, we're using a parametric T copula. We could also have used an empirical copula, a, another feature completely unique to model risk. So we have built our copula, and then what we've done is we've fitted some parametric distributions to each of our stock's log returns. In this case, uh, stock A and B were fitted to a hyperbolic secant, stock C to a Laplace, stock D to a logistic distribution. Again, these are parametric distributions, which we quite quickly fitted using model risks fitting function. We also could have used an OGIVE or an empirical distribution to represent the historical returns of these. Another feature very unique to model risk. What we've done then is taken a sample for each of the days in January of 2010. We've taken a sample of each stock from its distribution and then used the copula to correlate them so that for each of these days the returns for all four stocks should mimic the correlation pattern represented by the historical returns of the stock. Because we're in log space for each of the future or the forecast values we can just sum those up for each value in this model and then we can take the exponential of that to, to convert back out of log space and here is our actual total return and so essentially if we were to multiply each of these numbers to the closing price at the end of 2009 that would give us the forecasted price for the end of January 2010. If we go ahead and hit the F9 key we can see that every time the simulation runs we take a new sample of the copula and a new sample of the distributions, add them up and we get a new return. What we've also done here is we have then created a portfolio out of these four stocks based on these percentages. Talk about how we've determined those percentages in a moment and then we've just take proportionally added these returns to get a total return and you can see the total return changes with each trial of the simulation as well every time we recalculate the spreadsheet. Okay, for optimization, there's a very sophisticated, very capable optimization feature built into model risk. It's called OptQuest. OptQuest is really a leading method for doing simulation optimization. What you do first to run an optimization is you, there's a number of things you need to set up. You need a target. This is essentially a, an objective function. In this case, we want to maximize the total return. You have to identify some decision variables. In this case, we've, de we've designated a variable for each of our four stocks as a percentage and we've said that the lower bound is 0.1 or 10%, upper bound is 0.4 or 40%. So what we're essentially saying is that 
the allocation for each of these stocks can be no more than 40% and no less than 10% of the entire portfolio. We've got a constraint that we've built in to say that all four percentages have to add up to one for 100%. And then we've also said in order to try to minimize the the variation of the portfolio, we've said we want the coefficient of variation to be less than 0.3. There's a number of options and ways you can run a optimization, but to think about it conceptually, the, the what happens is we have designated these four values in the spreadsheet as decision variables. So when we start an optimization, what we do is give over control of these four values to OptQuest. OptQuest then goes through a series of algorithms to manipulate each of these four numbers so that they meet all of our requirements. They have to add up to 100%. And then once it's, once it's chosen a set of these values, it then runs a very short simulation, in this case just 50 iterations looks at the total return value based on that and then tries to readjust and run a simulation again. And so it's sort of a nested loop kind of scenario. You have the outside loop is the optimizer picking a set of these and then it runs a simulation, that's the inside loop, and then it resets the parameters of the decision variables, runs the inside loop and so on. For time's sake, I ran a optimization earlier. This, I just ran it for a few minutes. I, we can look at the results. There's two basic windows in the optimization result window, or two basic tabs. This one shows us a historical, uh, for each of the simulations, is along the x-axis, and then the value of our objective function is shown here. So you can see we start actually pretty high or close to 1, and then very gradually over time, OpQuest finds a better and better solution over the course of the few minutes that I ran this. Then you can see here it's maximized the value. The value is 1.04, or a... Uh, um, about a 4% growth, at least for the very few iterations that we ran of the simulation, and then a, a percentage for each of the decision variables. Here is our requirement that the coefficient of variation be below 0.3, and here is our constraint that the percentage has to add up to 100%. We can also look at the results from each of the simulations, and we here we've just looked at the 10 best solutions, and we can see that the best solution was the 419th try of setting these particular values for the uh, percentages. If we were to let this run longer, it may very well be that OpQuest finds a better result. Once we've done that, OpQuest automatically put the best values found back in our decision variables, and then I ran a quick simulation of that of our output and what we can see is this is the distribution of possible returns over the one month period and if we look at these uh, confidence interval we essentially had an 80% probability of being somewhere between down about 5.3% or up 9.7% so fairly broad range but given the example data we used there's a higher probability of being above one than below one. And we can actually see that the mean value after 5,000 trials is 102.1. So in other words, if we multiplied 1.021 times the uh, uh, beginning value of our portfolio, we could therefore see the end value. If you found this presentation interesting, and you'd maybe like a copy of the file, or you'd like to learn more about model risk, I'd uh, encourage you to contact us. You can go to voessoftware.com to download a trial version, or you can contact voseconsulting.com, our sister company, and main reseller if you have sales or technical questions.